Good morning, I'm Trish Pahanik, and this is Synopsis, your first early morning briefing. Today is Monday, June 23rd, 2008, and here are today's top stories. NBC News will have former nightly news anchor Tom Brokaw moderate Meet the Press through the November presidential election. Brokaw will start next week saying that he volunteered for the job to honor his friend and colleague Tim Russert, who died of a heart attack on June 13th. The show will be based in Washington, D.C. with Betsy Fisher as executive producer. According to NBC News President Steve Kappas, Brokaw is only filling in temporarily, but this interim period gives NBC more time to find a permanent replacement. Late Friday, ABC announced it is appealing the FCC's ruling and fines that center on a 2003 episode of NYPD Blue that, according to the FCC, violated indecency policies. ABC filed a brief Friday in the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit, claiming the FCC's ruling is arbitrary and capricious, contrary to the Commission's own standards and past decisions, and in violation of the First Amendment. The FCC's order dated February 19th fined 45 ABC stations, which included two ABC O&Os that carried the program a total of $1.2 million plus dollars, which ABC paid in protest so it could appeal the FCC's decision. Continuing their ongoing arguments in front of the FCC, Comcast contends the NFL network should be placed on a sports tier because of its higher license fees and limited number of games instead of an expanded basic tier with more distribution. The NFL network filed a formal complaint to the FCC last month saying Comcast was discriminating against the channel by putting it on a premium sports tier which costs customers more money while at the same time putting their own sports network on an analog basic tier which does not cost extra. This battle between Comcast and the NFL Network could become a mute point as ESPN and the NFL Network have been discussing ways they can partner. The talks reportedly are focused on how the two can combine resources and boost distribution, although the NFL Network has not commented directly on what was discussed. Bravo Season 2 premiere of Flipping Out last Tuesday at 10 p.m. drew in 511,000 adults 18 to 49 viewers and 672,000 total viewers. IATV, formerly known as Imagination, targeting the Asian Americans, is revamping its programming in order to become a viewing destination for Asian pop culture, reports Variety. Starting June 30th, IATV will add purchased theatricals from Sony and MGM, as well as Japanese anime series from Bandy Entertainment, to its primetime schedule. IATV will also debut a TV version of the Minnesota Network, five-minute segments of 70 sitcom that Sony runs on its Crackle on online programming site. Streamlining its programming, IATV developed five themed nights starting on Mondays with Good Movie Night, featuring titles such as Mississippi Misala and Eat Drink Man Woman. Tuesdays will be Chicks Kicks Flicks centered on a Kung Fu and action movies. Wednesdays will focus on anime and live action series. New series will fall on Thursday nights such as the original comedy Uncle Morty's Dub Shack and the stand-up show comedy Zen. And Fridays is reserved for retro movies with such titles as Buckaroo, Bonsai, and Flash Gordon. IATV will serve up its prime time starting at 7 p.m. with the magazine shows IA Link at 7 and Pacific Fusion at 7.30. In other news today, George Carlin, the man behind the seven words you can never say on TV comedy routine, died of heart failure yesterday at the age of 71, reports the AP. He went to the hospital yesterday afternoon complaining of chest pains and passed away later on that evening. Carlin first performed his seven words routine in Milwaukee in 1972, during which he spoke all seven words out loud and was arrested for disturbing the peace. The routine aired on a New York radio station in 1978, and it resulted in a Supreme Court case which upheld the government's authority to deliver sanctions on the station for using offensive language. Through his career, he won four Grammy Awards and was nominated five times for an Emmy Award, and most recently was awarded the Mark Twain Prize for American Humor. Moving along to production and development, HBO picked up a second season helping of the drama In Treatment, starring Gabriel Byrne as psychotherapist Paul Weston. The sophomore season pickup for the show was expected, but took time to hammer out as Byrne only had signed on for a single season. For the new season, HBO ordered approximately 35 total episodes down from 43 half hours from the first season, and may decide to schedule the show differently, opting to not strip it Monday through Friday. 
And that's a wrap for today. Be sure to check your email for the full printed version of today's synopsis with new executive moves and more on ratings, loads of new classified ads, and a few of the stories that did not make it into this podcast. And check out tonight's primetime broadcast lineup. This is a Synopsis Media production in association with 311 West. For Cynthia Turner, who wrote and compiled Synopsis in Connecticut, I'm Trish Pahonik. I'm going to have a good day. Even if I make it myself, I'm going to have a good day. I don't need no one else. I'm going to have a good day. Nothing wrong I could do. I'm going to have a good day. Hope you have a good day, too.